So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back and good afternoon. Uh, this afternoon, I want to begin by uh, taking you through an introduction of what we call ENSP. ENSP is the network. They are called network simulation. Network simulation uh, software. Uh, for Huawei. So this network simulation software for Huawei can be able to design and configure uh, uh, Huawei network devices like routers, switches, access points, firewall, and so on and so forth. So it's a very powerful simulator. Just like, for example, uh, uh, for Cisco, for Cisco they use a network simulator called Packet Tracer. Packet Tracer. We also have open, uh, open source. We also have open source uh, uh, network simulators. Mm, uh, like which one? I'm forgetting the name. What was the name of it? What was the name of that software? Uh -huh. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, say it again. GNS3, eh? Yeah, GNS3. GNS3. So you can also explore that one. Network simulators are very powerful because you can use it to design and implement an entire network. And in fact, you can copy configuration files from a virtual router or a virtual switch and upload it to your actual switch or router and it's going to it's going to just pick it and work are you together so that's how powerful that's how powerful network simulation software is uh, <clears throat> excuse me okay so let's have a look at this uh with ensp the window ah uh, let me just uh, restart it uh, so that you you just see how how it looks like from the beginning. So let me uh, ENSP. Whoop. Yes. So when you start ENSP, this is how it's gonna look like. Normally. Uh, uh we have a side we have a sidebar here we have the main uh top menu with a number of uh, commands represented using those icons which you're going to go through then we'll have the name of your project appear on top here uh we have other options that you can access by clicking on this drop down menu you can also take advantage of that. Uh, when you open ENSP, most of the time it will bring you to, uh, it will open up this window, which uh, gives you a list of examples. So ENSP comes with a list of examples in terms of topologies and configurations for all these protocols. OSPF, RIP version 1, version 2, BGP, etc., etc. Uh, you also get a list of the recent projects that you've been working on, and therefore you can simply double-click it from this list to open your recent labs. Eh? And you can also be able to learn uh, a few things uh, through these particular links. Now, normally, uh, if you want to create a new project, uh, you click here. A project in ENSP is called a topo. It's called a what? A topo. Otherwise, if you want to open an existing one, then you click here. You can also create a new topo by clicking on this first icon here. Okay, so let me just click on this one. Let me use this one, new topo, like that. Now, let's explore. 
let's explore this area. So this first bit here, this first bit here, we have routers. If I click on the next one, are you seeing what changes? Are you seeing the part that changes? We have a list of whatever you've clicked on appearing here. So if you've clicked on routers, then you have different versions of routers that appear here. Sometimes in the lab, they specify the device that you're supposed to use, the router that you're supposed to use. Most of the time, you'll just use this router with the name router. Uh, but if they specify any other version, for example, AR2220, you make sure you use that one. I'll show you how to add these devices uh, to the topo. In a, in a moment. Otherwise, if you click on this, you have a list of switches, uh, layer two and layer three switches. You also have wireless local area network devices, uh, access points, access controllers, ETC. You also have a firewall, uh, USG 5500 and 6000 V. Then when you click on this icon, you get the the end devices, the end devices. STA for station, simulate something like a laptop, and then cell phone, server, uh, client uh, to simulate uh, access to a website via HTTP and PC. So you'll be using the PC. Then you have the cloud. Cloud normally is used to simulate uh, the internet or remote connection. We have a frame relay switch. We have what is called a hub. I'm giving you uh, an assignment to go and read about a hub. And the other one is called, um, I want you to read about a hub. I also want you to read about, hmm? uh, a bridge, a hub, a bridge, a hub, and the bridge. I'm still feeling like there's, there's one I'm forgetting. Then we have this thunder icon. Uh, this thunder icon is used to give you a list of the media that you can use to interconnect your devices. You can use copper. Copper, you can use serial cables, and you can also use fiber, POS, ETC. So uh, uh, let's also explore. Uh, uh, OK. OK, so this one. This icon for creating a new topology. This one for creating a paper project. This one is for opening up your project. Save, save us. Print, undo, redo. This one is the arrow. It can be used in almost a similar manner as the hand to drag things around, but it also has a unique use, which I'm forgetting, but you're going to experience it. This one is used to delete items that you've added to your topo. This one is used to delete all the lines. If you want to delete all the lines, all the interconnection between devices at once, you can, you can click on this and it will delete all the lines. Otherwise, to delete a single line, you right click on it, and then you click delete, or you click on this icon, then you click on that line, and it's going to delete just that line. This one is for text. Most of the time, we will be labeling our topology with the IP address, network address, host A, host B, and so on and so forth. This one is a drawing palette. Uh, it's very important because, for example, when we learn about our SPF areas, we want to draw a circle around one area, a circle around another area, and add devices to different areas. So just can, can help you draw shapes, like rectangle, circle, oval, etc. To zoom in to your topology, to zoom out, to reset the zoom to the normal uh, default, then to start a device. When you, when you 
drag your device to your topo, you have to start it. So you can click on it, then you click on start. This one to stop the device. Mm. And then this one is to capture the data. You remember one of the softwares we've installed together with ENSP is Wireshark, right? So Wireshark is an open source software that is used for data capture. Data capture helps us to uh, to learn about the packets, to see the, the, the fields of the packets and the data that they hold. Eh? So we are going to also do that, I think, when we do the next lab. This one to show all interfaces. Normally, an interface is, is made up of a name and a number, right? Like gigabit ethernet, zero stroke, zero stroke one. So in case you're doing interconnections and you can't see the label interfaces, you click on this icon, then it's gonna, it's gonna pop them out. So always make sure you display uh, your, your interface labels so that you don't get confused and you don't uh, configure maybe an IP address on a wrong interface. If you want to have those lines, then you can click on that. If you don't want them, uh, if you want to open the command line interface of all your devices on the topo, you click on this, okay? Okay. Uh, then settings, we, we're going to explore that. Let me see. And uh, a few a few other things here, which I don't want to talk about uh, right now. And also you can get some help. You can also get some help from there. Okay. So how to add a device to your topo? There are two ways. For example, right now, I want to click on that icon, then I want to click and drag a PC. So I've clicked and dragged a PC to my topo. So that's one way. At times, at times you might have more than one device that you want to add to your topo. The easier way is not clicking and dragging, but just clicking on the device that you want. Then see, when I get into my topo, I can be able to drop a number like that. If I want my arrow back, I click on the arrow here like that. Are you seeing the other difference between the arrow and the hand? Yes, the arrow can be used to move things around just like the hand. Oh, okay. I've now seen what the the specific thing that the hand does. Okay, good, so let me click back that. So if you want to delete a device, you can right click on it, then delete. Or you can click on the upper menu, delete, then you come and click on the device. Yes, I want to delete you. You can click on the arrow to get back your arrow. Sometimes you might need to rename the device. Wh whatever name it comes with, you can be able to change it by clicking, double clicking. When you double click on the name, you can be able to change it. For example, we want to call this host B. We want to call it host B, for example. We want to call this uh, host A. Host A, like that. So we can be able to do something like that. Now, sometimes you'll also need to align uh, your devices uh, so that your topology looks neat. So to do that, you can click and drag over your devices like that. Then you can right click on one of them. Then you can click, for example, on horizontal align. So when you do horizontal align, it's going to align them. Let me just redo that. If, for example, that one is there, you can do that like that horizontal align. When you drag over several devices again, you can be able to move them together. Are you seeing that? Are you seeing that? When you drag over several devices, you can also start them together by clicking on the start, start device. Uh, so now they have started. 
how do you know that a device has started? The color uh, becomes a lighter version of itself. For example, let me shut this device uh, by clicking stop. I can right click on it and stop. So you can see the difference. So this one is lighter, this one is dark. So you can also start devices one by one by right clicking on the device, then you click on start. That is the recommended way of starting devices, especially if you're using uh, a, a computer whose specs are not very high, please do not start several routers at the same time, uh, multiple routers at the same time together, because if you do that, uh, it might overwhelm your, your, your system resources, your RAM. So most of the time, I just advise to start each one of them at a go. Right click, start, right click, start, like that. If you want to interconnect devices, for example, I want to interconnect these two devices, I click here on this icon, the thunder icon, I choose copper, for example, I select copper, then I can click on host A, it's going to give me a list of interfaces that it has. It only has one interface, an ethernet interface. I click on that, then I go to host B, I also click on that. So, as you can see, I have the labels. I have the labels. I can click back on the arrow. I have the labels. So, if the labels are not well placed, I can click and drag them. I can click and drag them, like that. In case I'm not seeing the labels, uh, I'm supposed to click here. So, you see, if you click this, you either show or hide them. Okay, so the other important one that you're going to be using is the text. You click on text, then one of the things that you'll always include is your, one of the things that you'll always include is your network address. So 1.0 slash 24, for example. Once you've done your network address, uh, then you can simply do uh, the specific interface address. For example, we want to configure this one with dot one, and we want to configure this other one with dot two, like that. So what happens? Uh, let me let me check this here. So always make sure you do this. Eh? So before you start configuration, you have to label your topology. Are we together? Yeah, you have to label your topology like what I'm doing. You have to label your topology. Now, um, these are PCs. To open up a PC so that you can be able to do configurations, you right click on it, then you click on settings. You click on settings. So when you click on settings, there are several things you can change. For example, the host name. You can change, for example, the host name. So we can call this uh, host A. Uh, we can also change the MAC address. Look here. For example, I'm changing that MAC address to AA, to end with AA. Are we together? So that we can just know that this is the MAC address of host A. Are we together? Yeah. Then you can configure IP. Uh, let me just zoom in. You can configure IP uh, uh, either through DHCP or statically. So you can change this to 192. Sorry. 168.1.0. And what will be the subnet mask? 255.0. We're having a point-to-point -point network between host A and host B. Do you think we need to configure a gateway? Do you need to configure a gateway? No. The other thing you can configure is DNS. Uh, DNS is domain name server, so you can configure the IP address of the domain name server. See, the other time I told you what the domain name server does. You remember, it maps public IP addresses with their 
domain name. Eh? Mm. Okay, if you're using IPv6, this is where you configure. Otherwise, after you're done configuring, always remember to click on apply. So you just apply like that, and then you can you can close this. You can close. Let me zoom out. Move this a little bit. Uh, close it. So I can do the same. I can do the same for host B. So right click, then settings. Otherwise, if I don't want to right click, I can simply double click on that PC. Tuck, tuck. And it's going to open up the same thing. So I'll call this host B. I'll change the MAC address to BB. Then I'll give it an IP address 192.168.1.2. Then I'll give it a mask 255.255.255. Then I'll click on apply. So once I'm done doing that, I now want to test the connectivity using the ICMP echo request. So that is using the ping application. But before I send the ping, I want to start a data capture. So to start a data capture, it simply means you want to read, you want to use the application Wireshark to read whatever packet passes through a particular interface. So to do data capture, you can right click on a particular interface. You can right click on a particular interface like that, and then you click on Start Data Capture. So you see the indicator there changes from green to, to blue. It also opens up Wireshark. So are you seeing we're having Wireshark here? Uh, remind me later. So we're having Wireshark. Uh, uh, right now, uh, Wireshark is made up of uh, tables, a, a table. The data is divided into a table or something. So we have the first, uh, the first column there, another one here. Then source, address, destination, address, protocol that is being used the length of that particular packet, and general information is the last one. So number is just the number of packets, the sequence number. This is packet number one, number two, number three, number four, blah. Time, when it was received, source address, destination IP address, the protocol that is used, the length, the size of that particular packet, and more information about it. Then, the other part is down here, where you can now explore a particular packet. You can click on a particular packet and explore more details, the different headers of that particular packet. So right now, right now we are having nothing because there's no data exchange. We don't have any data exchange between host one and host B. So it's not capturing anything. So let's initiate some traffic. Uh, let's initiate uh, some traffic. Uh, so I can double click on host A, then I click on the on the command here, command, command tab. So the first tab is basic configuration, then the second tab is command, the command tab. So from host A, I can write ping, then 192 dot one six eight dot one dot two so before i click enter uh, i want to place that window there then on this other side i place the data capture window are we together so look what happens when i click enter Are you seeing that Wireshark has captured some data? Oh. 
So now, what happens is this. Uh, this is a ping uh, request. Uh, by default, a ping will send five requests. And therefore, this time, we've gotten how many replies? Five replies. So you have the data summary here, five packets transmitted, five received, zero lost. You also have the summary about the maximum average and minimum time, round trip time, for you to send the echo and to get a reply. Normally, uh, ICMP messages are sequenced. You can see this was the first reply, second reply, third, fourth, fifth. By default, very important, please observe this. By default, for ICMP request, the TTL value is One hundred and twenty-eight. You also get the size of the packet and the source where it's coming from. It's coming from PC two and the round trip time. The round trip time. So those are very important statistics. Okay, now let's explore. Let's now explore this data on. Uh, uh, okay, let's explore this on Wireshark. Okay, so on Wireshark, um, look at the first, look at the first two packets. Have you seen the first two packets? How many packets have been captured in total? 12, right? But how many requests did we send? Five, right? And of course, we got five replies. So we're expecting a, a, at least 10, right? But the first two, what do you think the first two packets here are about? Yes, Luyo? Exactly. The first two, the first two are A R A R P. The very first message is a broadcast message, and it's called an A R P request packet. The second one is the second one is an A R P reply. Okay, so let's let's explore these packets. Look at this very first packet, packet number one. You can see that uh, the details here. By the details here, you can see that this packet is a broadcast packet. The protocol is ARP. The length is 60, and the information is who has who has what. Are you able to see? Who has 192.168.1.2? Tell who? Tell this guy. So let me show you. If I click on this packet, if I click on this packet, I can be able to explore the different headers for that particular packet from down here. So. If I open up this, I can see that now. <coughs> Sorry, maybe you can just <laughs> mute your mic. Okay. <laughs> uh, did did we learn by there about the Ethernet two header? Did we learn about the Ethernet header? Have we learned about the Ethernet header really? We haven't. Okay. Uh, let me open the address resolution protocol header. This one we've learned about so that you see. Uh, so you can, you can see that the hardware type, remember the hardware type field is Ethernet, the protocol type IPv4, hardware size, 
which is the size of the uh, hardware address, which is the MAC address, four by six bytes. Uh, protocol size, four bytes. Operation code, request, because this is a request. Then you can see that the source MAC address is that. Uh, sender IP address is dot one. Target MAC address is broadcast. Target IP address is this guy. So you can see those are some of the fields that we had looked at when we were looking at the ARP header. Otherwise, we also have the Ethernet header. The Ethernet header uh, is what is uh, added on the data link layer. So the Ethernet header will have the destination MAC address and the source MAC address. It also has what we call the type field that is used to specify the next protocol that will process that particular frame. So the type field is almost similar to the protocol field of the IP header. So on the Ethernet header, type field. And then it also has padding. You remember the IP header also had padding. And they said padding is filled with what? With all zeros, eh? Are you seeing that it's filled with zeros? Mm, so padding, padding. Anyway, if I click on the second one, you can see that the operation code changes. The operation code changes to reply. Are you seeing that? Yeah, it's a reply, it's a reply. Otherwise, if I click now on the first packet, I can see that it's an ICMP packet. And the very first one is a request, request, uh, it's a request. So if I come down, let me collapse this header. Let me collapse this one. I want to display the IP header, the IP header. So this is what we, we learned today. Uh, you remember the version, the version field, right? You remember the header length? The header length. You remember the what was this called for implementing differentiated services and quality quality of service. Then there was the total length of the packet. Then there was the identification. There was the flags. So you can see the value that is on the flags is saying don't don't fragment. So if you convert this to binary, then you'll understand. Fragment of set, meaning this is the very first uh, packet. See time to leave. See the protocol. So we are going to pass this to which protocol next? To ICMP, to ICMP. And of course the IP header will also have the source and destination IP address. So other than that, you have the uh, let me collapse this. You have the Internet Control Message Protocol, ICMP header. So this packet has an IP header and an ICMP header. So again, we looked at this. We know that we have the type and the code field that determines the particular message. So this one is echo request, uh, checksum, uh, sequence number, uh, check some sequence number. Okay, I think that is that is it. So let's look at uh, a reply. So for a reply, you can see that the header changes to echo reply. Type zero, code zero. Are we together? Yes. Okay. Uh, so that is how you use. Uh, that is how you use uh, that is how you use a, a Wireshark to capture packets and to look at the details about a particular packet. Okay. Oh. Uh, huh. Now let's go back to let's go back here. 
Uh, oh, you remember when we were learning about ARP, we said we have an ARP cache, right? Remember? Remember ARP cache, cache table? Now, if you type ARP minus A on the command prompt, you should be able to get the ARP cache table. So you can see that actually we have it. The first column is internet address, then physical address, then type. How did I learn about this address? Right now it's empty, even though we know that it has already learned the MAC address of host B, right? But the reason a store is empty is because entries on the ARP table, cache table, are not stored for long. So that in case you change the IP address of the other host, we cannot send data that will not be able to get to the destination. So if I repeat the ping again, if I repeat the ping again, then I do ARP negative A, then you're going to see that it will have some content. I've forgotten, please go and read about it. I've forgotten how long uh, this association is stored on the ARP cache table. So you can see that it will learn. It will learn that dot two has a MAC address of BB and we've learned it through ARP, so it's dynamic. Is that clear? Okay, so uh, the other thing that I wanted to show you just a bit is, uh, for example, on a router. If, you, if you're adding a router, because the very first lab you're going to do, you're going to add a router. Uh, you can click on it, then you can place it, for example, there. Then to get back your arrow, you can click on the arrow. Then you can right click it, you can start your router like that, for example. So for the routers and the switches, you're only going to get a CLI. So you're not going to get uh, a graphical user interface like this one to configure IP, you're going to get a command line interface. So how to open the command line interface two ways, you can right click, then you click CLI, or you can simply double click. If you double click, it opens up, it opens up the uh, uh, command line interface. For me, I've set my command line interface to have bigger fonts, uh, different colors, and also the I've made the background to be a little bit transparent. I know you can't see when I'm projecting, but I've made it a little bit transparent so that I can be able to see the background, the topology, when I'm configuring. And so, for example, if I want to change the name of this device, I go to System View by typing System View, like that. Then I typed System Sysname. Sysname, maybe I want to call this R1, like that. So that's the very first thing you'll always do with these routers, changing, changing the name, for example. So let me just show you how you can change the font. I want you to change the font to a little bit bigger and also you make the background a little bit transparent so that even when I'm coming to support you, I can be able to uh, see better. So to change the font, you can come and click here on settings. Once you're done configuring, you can close it or you can leave it. Uh, let me just add another router. Uh, I need to mm, delete. Uh, I just want to add this normal router. Double click. I haven't started it. Start it. So, look, I open R1. I open this one. Oh, it's still starting. Uh, so, you see. You can either have all your CLIs on one window, or you can break them up by clicking on this. If you click here, then they are opened up on different windows. For easier management, you can just have them on, on one window. That's my preference. I don't know what, uh, what you like, but to do that, you click on that icon. So if you click on settings, uh, you can come to CLI tab, CLI, CLI. Uh, then you can change transparency here. Transparency here, custom, then you can drag it. 
you can drag it to the level, the level that you, you wish. Then you can come to font. So you can change the CLI font, uh, the foreground color and the background color. So I've chosen green and black. Uh, the text tip, this one that I'm using to label the IP addresses and the interface address, you can see I've also changed the color and the size uh, just so that they're they are a little bit bigger. So I've chosen, this is not the default, black as my foreground color and yellow as my background color. So ladies and gentlemen, that's the short intro to ENSP. Anyone with a question? Before we start doing the lab, anyone with a question? Okay, thank you very much. So now I want you to, yes, Luya. Hello. Uh huh. Go ahead, go ahead and ask. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Okay. So Louis is asking, what happens when you want to configure the router through a console cable? So to do that, you use um, you use a serial cable. You come here and then you come to serial. So from the serial cable you'll be able to uh configure the the router you'll be able to configure the router through the serial cable. Are we, t are we together? So that's how you do it. Okay. So uh, I want you now to do lab, uh, the very first lab, please pair up, two, two, and then you read the instructions as you, as you do the lab.